St. Luke's Bariatric Manual, Chapter 2, Lesson Plan 3. Continue to follow Lesson Plan 1 and 2. Stop eating between meals. Start choosing good carbohydrates. Continue no drinking 30 minutes before eating. Begin no drinking while eating. Drink at least three 8-ounce glasses of water every day. Follow Week 2 of Walking Plan. Below, track your successes, your challenges, your objective for the next month, and your weight. Whether or not you have diabetes, carbohydrates play an important role in proper nutrition. Basic Carbohydrate Counting General Information What is carbohydrate counting? Carbohydrate counting is a way to plan your meals by counting the amount of carbohydrates in foods. It can help you eat the right amount of carbohydrates to keep your blood sugar levels under control. What meal plan is right for me? A dietitian or caregiver will help you develop a healthy meal plan that works best for you. You will be taught how much carbohydrate to eat or drink for each meal and snack. Your meal plan will be based on your age, weight, usual food intake, and physical activity level. If you are diabetic, it will also include your blood sugar levels and diabetes medicine. Once you know how much carbohydrate you should eat, you can decide what type of food you want to eat. You will need to know what foods contain carbohydrate and how much they contain. Keep track of the amount of carbohydrate in meals and snacks in order to follow your meal plan. Do not avoid carbohydrates or skip meals. Your blood sugar may fall too low if you do not eat enough carbohydrate or you skip meals. What are some foods that contain carbohydrate? Breads. Each serving of food listed below contains 15 grams of carbohydrate. One slice of bread, or one ounce, or one flour or corn tortilla, six inches. One quarter of a bagel, about one ounce. One pancake, about four inches across and one fourth inch thick. Cereals and grains. Serving sizes of ready to eat cereals vary. Look at the serving size and the total carbohydrate amount listed on the food label. Each serving of food listed below contains 15 grams of carbohydrate. 3 fourths cup dry, unsweetened, ready to eat cereal, or 1 fourth cup of low fat granola. 1 half cup of cooked cereal or oatmeal. 1 third cup of cooked rice or pasta. Starchy vegetables. Each serving of food listed below contains 15 grams of carbohydrate. 1 half cup of corn, green peas, sweet potatoes, or mashed potatoes, one-fourth of a large baked potato, one cup of winter squash, acorn or pumpkin, beans, peas, or lentils. Each serving of food listed below contains 15 grams of carbohydrate, one-half cup of beans and peas, garbanzo, pinto, kidney, white, split, black-eyed, two-third cup of lima beans, one-half cup of lentils. Crackers and snacks. Each serving of food listed below contains 15 grams of carbohydrate, three gram cracker squares or eight animal crackers, six saltine type crackers, three cups of popcorn or three-fourth ounce of pretzels. Fruit. Each serving of food listed below contains 15 grams of carbohydrate, one small four ounce piece of fresh fruit, one half cup of canned fruit packed in natural juice or one half cup of fresh fruit, one half cup four ounces of unsweetened fruit juice, one fourth cup of dried fruit. Desserts or sugary foods. Each serving of food listed below contains 15 grams of carbohydrate, one unfrosted brownie, two inch square, two small cookies, one half cup of sugar-free, fat-free ice cream. Milk and yogurt. Foods from the milk group contain 12 grams of carbohydrate per serving. One cup of milk. Three-fourths cup of plain, non-fat yogurt. One cup of fat-free, flavored yogurt with artificial sweetener. Non-starchy vegetables. Each serving contains five grams of carbohydrate. One half cup of cooked vegetables or one cup of raw vegetables. This includes beets, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, cucumber, mushrooms, tomatoes, and zucchini.
one half cup of vegetable juice. How do I use carbohydrate counting to plan meals? Count carbohydrate amounts using serving sizes. Learn to visualize serving sizes by measuring your foods with measuring cups, measuring spoons, and a scale. A serving of carbohydrate counts as 15 grams of carbohydrate. Round up to the amount of the carbohydrate in milk to 15 grams to make counting easier. Count the carbohydrates in non-starchy vegetables only if you eat three servings per meal. Three servings of non-starchy vegetables are equal to 15 grams. If you eat only one or two servings, do not count these carbohydrates in the total amount. Pasta dinner example. Your meal plan allows you to have 60 grams of carbohydrate for dinner. To figure out the amount of carbohydrate for this meal, multiply the number of servings you plan to eat by 15 grams of carbohydrate per serving. For example, one cup of cooked pasta is equal to three servings of carbohydrate, about 45 grams. If you eat one cup of cooked pasta, you would be able to eat one more serving of carbohydrate food, 15 grams, such as a slice of bread or half cup of peas. Count carbohydrate amounts using food labels. Find the total amount of carbohydrate in foods by reading the food label. Food labels tell you the serving size of the food and the total carbohydrate amount in each serving. Find the serving size on the food label and then decide how many servings you will eat. Multiply the number of servings you plan to eat by the carbohydrate amount per serving. Granola bar snack example. Your meal plan allows you to have 30 grams of carbohydrate for a snack. To figure out the amount of carbohydrate for this snack, multiply the number of servings by the total carbohydrate amount listed on the food label. You plan to eat one package of granola bars, which contains two bars. According to the food label, the serving size of food in this package is one bar. Each serving, one bar, contains 25 grams of carbohydrate. Total carbohydrate amount listed on food label. The total amount of carbohydrate in this package of the granola bars would be 50 grams. Based on your meal plan, you should eat only one bar. When should I contact my caregiver? Contact your caregiver if you have questions about your diet. You have high blood sugar levels during a certain time of the day or almost all the time. You often have low blood sugar levels. Target heart rate. How do you get your heart rate on target? When you work out, are you doing too much or not enough? There's a simple way to know. Your target heart rate helps you hit the bullseye. We don't want people to overexercise, and the other extreme is not getting enough exercise, says Gerald Fletcher, MD, a cardiologist and professor in the Mayo Clinic College of Medicine in Jacksonville, Florida. First things first. Before you learn how to calculate and monitor your target training heart rate, you have to know your resting heart rate. Your resting heart rate is the number of times your heart beats per minute while it's at rest. You can check it in the morning after you've had a good night's sleep and before you get out of bed. According to the National Institute of Health, the average resting heart rate for children 10 years and older and adults, including seniors, is 60 to 100 beats per minute. For well-trained athletes, it's 40 to 60 beats per minute. Hitting the target. Now you're ready to determine your target training heart rate. As you exercise periodically, take your pulse on the inside of your wrist on the thumb side. Use the tips of your first two fingers, not your thumb, to press lightly over the blood vessel on your wrist. Count your pulse for 10 seconds and multiply by six to find your beats per minute. You want to stay between 50% to 85% of your maximum heart rate. This range is your target heart rate. Know your numbers. This table shows estimated target heart rates for different ages. Your maximum heart rate is about 220 minus your age. In the age category closest to yours, read across to find your target heart rate. Heart rate during moderately intense activities is about 50 to 69% of your maximum heart rate, whereas heart rate during hard physical activity is about 70% to less than 90% of the maximum heart rate. The figures are averages, so use them as a general guideline. Age, 20 years. Target heart rate zone, 50 to 85%, 100 to 170 beats per minute. Average maximum heart rate, 100%, 200 beats per minute. Age, 30 years. Target heart rate, 95 to 162 beats per minute. 
Average maximum heart rate, 190 beats per minute. 35 years. Target heart rate, 93 to 157 beats per minute. Average maximum heart rate, 185 beats per minute. Age, 40 years. Target heart rate, 90 to 153 beats per minute. Average maximum heart rate, 180 beats per minute. Age, 45 years. Target heart rate, 88 to 149 beats per minute. Average maximum heart rate, 100%, 175 beats per minute. Age, 50 years. Target heart rate, 85 to 145 beats per minute. Average maximum heart rate, 170 beats per minute. Age, 55 years. Target heart rate zone, 83 to 140 beats per minute. Average maximum heart rate, 165 beats per minute. Age, 60 years. Target heart rate zone, 80 to 136 beats per minute. Average maximum heart rate, 160 beats per minute. Age, 65 years. Target heart rate, 78 to 132 beats per minute. Average maximum heart rate, 155 beats per minute. Age, 70. Target heart rate zone, 75 to 128 beats per minute. Average maximum heart rate, 150 beats per minute. Important note, a few high blood pressure medications lower the maximum heart rate and thus the target zone rate. If you are taking such medication, call your physician to find out if you need to use a lower target heart rate. So what's in a number? If your heart rate is too high, you're straining, so slow down. If it's too low and the intensity feels light or moderate brisk, you may want to push yourself to exercise a little harder. During the first few weeks of working out, aim for the lower range of your target zone, 50%, and gradually build up to the higher range, 85%. After six months or more, you may be able to exercise comfortably at up to 85% of your maximum heart rate. It's not an absolute, but it's a good tool to have, says Fletcher, who is also an American Heart Association volunteer. And if you don't know it, remember, if you're not able to carry on a conversation while exercising, that may be a bit too much. If you have a heart condition or you're in a cardiac rehab, talk to a healthcare professional about what exercises you can engage in, what your target heart rate should be, and whether you need to be monitored during physical activity. This will also help you to choose the types of physical activity that are appropriate for your current fitness level and health goals, because some activities are safer than others. Chapter 6. Going Home How to Care for Your Wound After It Is Treated with Dermabond Advanced Topical Skin Adhesive Dermabond Advanced Adhesive is a sterile, liquid skin adhesive that holds wound edges together. The film will usually remain in place for 5 to 10 days, then naturally fall off your skin. The following will answer some of your questions and provide instructions for proper care for your wound while it is healing. Check wound appearance. Some swelling, redness, and pain are common with all wounds and will normally go away as the wound heals. If swelling, redness, or pain increases, or if the wound feels warm to touch, contact a doctor. Also contact a doctor if the wound edges reopen or separate. Caring for bandages. If your wound is bandaged, keep the bandage dry. When changing the dressing, do not place tape directly over Dermabond Advanced Adhesive because removing the tape later may also remove the film. Avoid topical medications. Do not apply liquid or ointment medications or any other product to your wound while the Dermabond Advanced Adhesive is in place. These may loosen the film before your wound is healed. Keep wound dry and protected. Apply a clean, dry bandage over the wound if necessary to protect it. You may occasionally and briefly wet your wound in the shower or bath. Do not soak or scrub your wound. Do not swim and avoid periods of heavy perspiration until the Dermabon Advanced Adhesive has naturally fallen off. After showering or bathing, gently blot your wound dry with a soft towel. If a protective dressing is being used, apply a fresh, dry bandage keeping the tape off the Dermabon Advanced Adhesive. Protect your wound from injury until the skin has sufficient time to heal. Do not scratch, rub, or pick at Dermabond Advanced Adhesive. This may loosen the film before your wound is healed. 
Protect the wound from prolonged exposure to sunlight or tanning lamps while the film is in place. If you have any questions or concerns about this product, please consult your doctor. Possible Complications and Side Effects of Bariatric Surgery The first several of the complications listed below can occur with any operation. Deep Vein Thrombosis, DVT, a blood clot that usually occurs in the lower leg. What are the signs and symptoms? Cramping, swelling, pain, warmth, and or redness in the calf or behind the knee. What should I do? Call the doctor. How do I prevent this from happening? Get up and get moving as soon as possible. Keep the compression boots on your legs while in bed or chair during your hospital stay. Do not smoke. If you smoke, you are at greater risk. All sleeve gastrectomy patients will be on Lovenox for 14 days post-op. Pulmonary embolus or emboli, blood clot that goes to the lungs. What are the signs and symptoms? Sudden shortness of breath or inability to breathe. Shoulder pain. What should I do? Call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. How do I prevent this from happening? Get up and get moving as soon as possible. Keep the compression boots on your legs while in bed or chair during your hospital stay. Do not smoke. If you smoke, you are at greater risk. All sleeve gastrectomy patients will be on 14 days of Lovenox post-op in order to prevent mesenteric blood clots. Pneumonia. What are the signs and symptoms? Shortness of breath. Cough. Yellow or green mucus with the cough. Chest pain. And fever. What should I do? Call the doctor. If shortness of breath is severe, go to the emergency room. How do I prevent this from happening? Get up and moving to expand your lungs. Use your incentive spirometer 10 times per hour while you are awake for one week after your operation. Infection. You may have some normal drainage from your incision. It may be pale yellow to pale pink. Infection would look different than that. What are the symptoms? Change in drainage appearance like thickening, green or yellow in color, and or foul odor. Fever greater than 101 degrees. Increased pain, swelling, warmth, or redness around the incisions. What should I do? Call your doctor. Nausea and vomiting. If you are less than 10 days from your surgery date, call your surgeon. Otherwise, you should make sure you follow the 30-60 minute rule. Chew thoroughly. Eat slowly. Meal should last 20 minutes. Stop eating when full. If you are following all the rules, consider expanding the 30-60 rule to the 60-75. If symptoms improve, follow this new rule for two to three weeks, then return to the 30-60 rule. If symptoms do not improve, call the office for additional consultation. Small bowel obstruction, an obstruction or blockage caused by surgery connections, anastomosis, ruin Y gastric bypass, and BPD. What are the symptoms? Abdominal pain that will not go away. Persistent vomiting or not being able to eat. No or greatly decreased bowel movements or having diarrhea only. What should I do? Call your doctor. If pain is unbearable, go to the emergency room. Dehydration. Not getting enough fluids. What are the symptoms? Dark or concentrated urine. Dizziness or weakness when you sit or stand up. Confusion. How can I prevent this? Drink 48 to 64 ounces of fluid every day. What should I do for dizziness? Change your position slowly. If you take medicine for high blood pressure, check with the doctor who ordered it. If symptoms worsen, call your doctor. Ulcers. You are at higher risk of forming ulcers along the new connections, anastomosis, or staple line. What are the symptoms? Abdominal pain or pain in the lower mid-chest area. Vomiting or vomiting blood. Black stools or bowel movements. How can I prevent this? Do not smoke or chew tobacco. Take your anti-acid medicine as prescribed by your doctor. Stay away from aspirin and NSAIDs non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. See list of medications to avoid. What should I do? Call your doctor. If you vomit blood, go to the emergency room. If you are more than a week after surgery and you have teary black stool, call the surgeon's office. Leak. Fluid from the stomach or bowel leaks into the belly cavity at the new surgery connection sites, anastomosis, or along a staple line. What are the symptoms? Racing heart rate. Temperature greater than 101 degrees Fahrenheit. Difficulty breathing. Abdominal pain. 
Shoulder pain. Extreme urge to have a bowel movement but not being able to. Feeling of impending doom or anxiety. What should I do? Call 911. It is best to go to the emergency room at the hospital where you had your surgery. If that is not possible, go to the nearest emergency room. Check now for hospitals in your area that perform gastric bypass surgery. Stoma blockage. Food is blocking or gets stuck in the new opening from the pouch in the small bowel, primarily for RU and Y gastric bypass. However, sleeve patients may experience similar symptoms and should follow the same instructions. What are the symptoms? The feeling of very bad indigestion. The feeling of something stuck in upper chest area. What should I do? Scenario 1. Stop eating. Take a sip of warm water. If you do not vomit, continue sipping on warm water every 20 minutes until the food passes or the feeling passes. Scenario 2. Stop eating. Take a sip of warm water. If you vomit, wait 20 minutes and sip warm water again. If you vomit again, call your doctor. If there is not vomit with the second sip, follow scenario 1. If you ever vomit twice, call the doctor. How can I prevent this? Eat slowly. Cut up your food into small pieces. Chew your food very well. Do not drink with your meals. Strictures. Sometimes the opening from the pouch or sleeve into the small bowel gets too small. What are the symptoms? Feels like food is stuck all the time or like really bad indigestion. This happens every time you eat. Frothing or foaming in mouth. Nausea and vomiting every time you eat. Only liquids can stay down. It is possible that nothing stays down. What should I do? Call your doctor. Gallbladder attack. Any rapid weight loss can cause gallstones leading to gallbladder problems, not BPD. What are the symptoms? Pain under the right side of your ribs. Pain moving around to your back. Nausea and vomiting, especially after eating. What should I do? Call your doctor. If the pain is unbearable, go to the emergency room. Dumping syndrome. Symptoms that are caused by eating foods higher in sugar or fats. What are the symptoms? Nausea. Diarrhea and abdominal cramping. Sweatiness. Runny nose. Rapid heart rate. Feeling tired. And dizziness. What should I do? You will have to wait for symptoms to pass. Symptoms usually pass within 30 minutes. Stay away from foods high in sugar or high in fats. Change in bowel habits. Sleeve and RNY. You may have less bowel movements than you did before the operation, causing constipation. Constipation is having difficulty making a bowel movement or having a hard, dry bowel movement or when you go longer than usual between bowel movements. Symptoms of constipation include difficulty passing your bowel movement, pain, or bleeding during your bowel movement, a feeling that you did not finish having a bowel movement, bloating, and nausea. Constipation is common the first months after weight loss surgery. What causes this? You are eating less food. You are taking extra vitamins. You may not be drinking enough fluids. You may not be getting enough fiber. Narcotic pain medicine, like the one you were given when you left the hospital, can cause constipation. What should I do? Medical recommendations. Take Miralax for three days prior to your surgery. You will continue Miralax after surgery until you have a bowel movement. Miralax is not a stimulant laxative. It uses the water in your body to hydrate, soften, and eases the stool through the colon. Do not go more than four days without a bowel movement. If you have not had a bowel movement in four days, we work from the bottom up. Do the following. Glycerin suppository. You may use two times in 24 hours. If this does not work, Dulcolax suppository. You may use two times in 24 hours. If this does not work, warm water enema. Purchase a fleet saline enema, empty contents and fill with warm water. Follow the package instructions for administration. Once you have had a good bowel movement, take Miralax daily in the evening. If your bowel movements become too loose or too frequent, adjust the use of Miralax to every other day. Oral stimulant laxative. Do not start use until two weeks after your surgery. Your bowels need to heal. Stimulant laxatives can cause dependence and should not be used on a regular basis. Instead, they should only be used to resolve constipation. Examples. Bisacodyl, Exilax, Correctol, Smooth Move Tea, etc. Stool softeners. 
may try a stool softener such as Colace once or twice per day. Dietary Recommendations Drink 4 ounces Plum Smart Light or Light Prune Juice. Pureed Diet Include 1 fourth cup pureed fruit per day or baby food. Prunes, plums, peaches, pears. Avoid bananas and applesauce if you are constipated. Soft Diet Include 1 fourth cup fruit per day. Use canned or jarred in light syrup or fruit juice. Rinse off the syrup or fruit juice. Avoid bananas and applesauce. No raw fruit. Fiber. Add fiber to your diet if you had your operation more than two weeks before your symptoms. You can use over-the-counter gummies or powder. Limit to five grams per day. If using fiber, make sure you are drinking extra fluids. Fiber needs the fluids in order to form the bulk. Drink 48 to 64 ounces of fluid every day. Change in bowel habits, BPD. You may have more frequent and or loose bowel movements than you did before the operation. You may have more foul-smelling stool or gas. What causes this? Bypassing a large portion of the small bowel decreases digestion and fluid reabsorption from the stool. Fat malabsorption plays a big part too. What should I do? Avoid higher fat food. Speak to your surgeon. Vitamin deficiencies. Due to the decreased amount of food you are eating and the decreased absorption of some vitamins and minerals, you are at risk of having low vitamin and or mineral levels. What are the symptoms? Weakness or tiredness. Confusion. Tingling or pins and needles feeling in hands or feet. Any unusual changes from the normal. What else could happen? If left go too long, Vitamin or mineral deficiencies can cause permanent damage. Bones can become weak. What should I do? Take your vitamins and minerals for life. Get your blood test on a regular basis as ordered by your doctor. Call your doctor if you have symptoms so your blood can get checked. Hair thinning. When does this happen and why? Hair thinning usually occurs anywhere from three to nine months after your operation. Hair loss should be temporary. It is caused by a sudden drop in the amount of calories and protein you are eating and the hormone changes caused by rapid weight loss. What should I do? You can shampoo with neoxin. Take 1,000 milligrams of flaxseed oil daily. Make sure you are getting 60 to 80 grams of protein per day. Take your vitamins and minerals as ordered. Take no more than 600 micrograms biotin per day. Your bariatric multivitamin should be sufficient without adding extra. Too much biotin can alter lab results such as thyroid panel and cardiac enzymes. Take 500 to 550 milligrams L-lysine or keratin or collagen. Large folds of skin. It is possible that you will have sagging skin. How can I prevent this? Take your vitamins and minerals. Eat healthy. Drink 48 to 64 ounces of fluids every day. Exercise. You may not be able to prevent this. Age and genetics may determine how well your skin recovers. Will insurance cover the removal of excess skin? Insurance may cover this. If you get rashes or skin breakdown under the skin folds, take pictures and have your doctor write in your chart about these problems. If excess skin interferes with normal movement or causes back pain, have your doctor write in your chart about these problems. If you wait until you lost all your weight or at least 18 months to two years after your operation. Hormonal changes. Hormones are fat loving. When you lose weight, the fat cells release hormones back into your blood. What could happen? Females may become more fertile. Menstrual cycles can become irregular, causing increased risk of pregnancy. You need to prevent pregnancy even if you struggled to get pregnant before you had your operation. It is recommended to not get pregnant for at least two years after surgery. Use two forms of birth control. One form of birth control needs to be a barrier type, such as a condom or diaphragm. Periods or menses could be heavier and longer. If you have already entered menopause, you may have several periods again. Back or hip pain. As you lose weight, you may walk or sit differently due to a change in your center of gravity. What can I do? Exercise to strengthen the muscles of your legs and back. Be aware of your posture. Be patient. This change will eventually stop as your weight loss slows down. St. Luke's Weight Management Patient Follow-Up Schedule After Bariatric Surgery 
Day zero, surgery and hospital discharge. Prior to first surgeon post-op appointment. Appointment with primary care physician. Day 10 or 11 after surgery date. First post-op visit with surgeon and dietitian. Five weeks after surgery. Post-op class with dietitian. Three months after surgery. Second post-op visit with physician assistant. Lab slip given. Advise to get lab draws before six-month visit. Six months after surgery. Third post-op visit with physician assistant. Lab slip given. Advise to get lab draws before one-year annual visit. Nine months after surgery. 5.30 meeting before support group at all locations. See Chapter 9 in your manual. We will take an after photo if you like. One year after surgery. First annual visit with physician's assistant. Annually forever. Annual visits. Lab slips are given at the actual visit for all second annual and follow-up annual appointments. Lab should be drawn shortly after this visit. Lab slips will not be given in advance of the visits. Social workers and dietitians are available for follow-up when needed. Call the office to set up an appointment. My Reminders Bariatric Surgery Do Plan for discharge before coming to the hospital. If needed, determine who is going to help you at discharge. Purchase liquids, protein, and vitamins as outlined in sections 3 and 4 of this manual. Purchase measuring cups to measure portion size once you are eating food. Respond to surveys from our department. Schedule your first follow-up appointment with the surgeon. Continue to follow annually. Refer to the follow-up schedule after bariatric surgery on previous page for time intervals. Quit smoking if you have not already quit. Let your surgeon know if you need help. Get your lab work done when ordered by your surgeon. Come to support group monthly. Take your vitamins and minerals daily. Call the office or bariatric team with any questions. Keep in touch and let us know how you are doing. Join us on Facebook for questions, answers, announcements, and conversation. Search Facebook for St. Luke's Bariatric Patient Forum and request to join. Watch gum chewing. It can cause gas and can block your stoma if swallowed. Download our Berry-tastic app. Use program code 58531 to connect to our program. Exercise. It is vital for your success. Get a medical alert bracelet. See enclosed information. Take your measurements before surgery and monthly thereafter. Stay committed when you hit plateaus, periods when you do not lose weight. This is your body's normal response to rapid weight loss. You will get over the plateau if you follow the rules. Do not. Lift more than five pounds for the first week after surgery. Gobble food. Eat slowly. Talk while eating. You will get air in your pouch. Drink 30 minutes before, during, or 60 minutes after meals. Drink alcohol. You will have decreased tolerance, which may cause you to become intoxicated easily. Alcohol can cause dumping syndrome and can be dehydrating. Use straws for first six months. Drink carbonated beverages for at least one year. Take aspirin or NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Refer to the medicine list. If you take aspirin for cardiac heart reasons, speak with your surgeon about this. Smoke. Drive while taking prescription narcotic pain medicine.